Hi and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking about clipping masks. And this is where you basically fit an image or a texture inside another image or shape to make a really cool effect. And it's really actually quite simple, it just is a matter of understanding the steps. So I'll walk you through it with a few examples. So let's dive right in here. And in our first example here we just have a little picture of grass texture. Pretty straightforward. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a clipping mask to create just the word grass over this grass. Okay. Now the first thing we want to do is unlock our background layer by clicking on that little icon. And then the second thing we want to do is create a background layer behind this. And you'll see why in a minute. It's not necessary, but it makes the effect much better. So we're going to go to New Adjustment Layer and go to Solid Color. And then you can pick whatever color you want. For now, I'm just going to go with white. So you can select there, or you can also say F, 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 F in the hex colors here. Click OK. And then we need to drag that down and drop it below our texture layer, or our image layer, I should say. I call it a texture layer because I'm using this as a texture for the letters. OK, so the next step is to create our text. So we hit the T key on our keyboard. Or you can go up here and choose the text tool. And then I'm just going to click in here and I'm going to make my text nice and big. And I'm going to type the word grass in caps. I'm going to drag this layer up on top so I can actually see it. There we go. And you can play with the letting and spacing and stuff in the character panel. I'm not going to do that for the sake of this example, just so that we can get done quicker. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, and you can reselect it by just double clicking on the T there. And we'll just make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to click OK to accept the changes. Then I'm going to hit the V key or the Move tool, and I'm going to grab this and center it on the screen. And then we, what we need to do is go Control A to select the whole layer, and then I can grab it and I can move it to center it and snap it to the guides. And let's see if, the, oh, there we go. Now I can control D to deselect it. We've got it centered. Okay, and then the tricky part is that you have to have the layer, the image layer, on top of whatever shape. In this case, the shape is our text. So I'm gonna grab this, drag it up. Now you see it's covering up the grass, the word grass. But as soon as we connect these two layers, you're gonna see it pop through. So I'm going to hover my hand right between the two layers, and I'm going to hit the Alt key. And then if I move it a little bit, you'll see it turns to a down arrow and a box, and that's Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac. And then once you're hovering there, you just click it. And what it did was this essentially became a mask for that. And so you can just see the grass showing through the outlines of the word grass. And if I didn't have a background on there, then it would just be on transparent, right? So that would be a little weird. But that's how you do that. And the cool thing is you can actually select on this image layer and then using the move tool or hitting the letter V on your keyboard, you can grab that layer and you can move it depending on what effect you want. So if you want some of the blur back there, you can do that. If I go all the way down, it's actually showing the blue of the lettering because that was the color that I made the letter. But it doesn't matter what color your letters are because as soon as you do this clipping mask and constrain it, whatever's behind it will show. So we could go for the heavy texture like that if we wanted to, or we could go with, with kind of a lighter or medium texture. Somewhere right there is probably pretty good. And that's it. And let's just do one more example to kind of cement this in your mind. I'm gonna go to this image here. And we're just going to use the field here as a background. And we're going to actually type the word field. So we're going to hit the T key and click into anywhere. Select all. Oh, I was already selected on all. Make it bigger. And then type the word field in caps. And we need to make that even bigger. And of course you can change the font on this and do all kinds of things if you want. But we're just going to go quick and simple. You notice how I'm clicking on the text size and I'm just dragging. You can also use the drop down or whatever, but 
it's easy to just click and drag like that. Select it, hit the V key, so you have the move tool, and move it. Oh, we have to go Control A to select the whole layer, and then we can move it and snap it into place. I always forget to do that. Oh, let's unlock the background. I don't know why I'm struggling here. It's not letting me snap it into place. Well, we can also do this trick. We can go center vertically, or center horizontally, and then center vertically. That works. But that's centered, so it works. Now we drag this up to the top, remember, because our layer always has to be on top. And you'll know because whatever shape you have in the background will be hidden. And then we hover over the center here, and we hit Alt and click when we have the box and arrow. And that constrains our image to the shape. And then we need a background. We'll just do a solid color. And let's just do black for this one, just for fun. Click OK. And then, of course, drag that down. Bam. There you go. And then once again, we can change where this lines up. Make sure you clicked on the V key. You could even throw a little top of the barn in there or something if you wanted. If you wanted to be funky, or you could go way down for a much heavier texture like that. And for one more, I'm going to say Control O to open images. And I have this little baby. And I'm going to unlock that layer. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer behind it. We'll just leave this blue to see how that goes. Click OK. Slide it behind it. And then we're going to put another texture on here, or another image to create our mask. And we're going to say File, Place Embedded, because we're going to add another image to this. And I'm going to grab this little footprint. And I think we can probably leave that about like that. I haven't tried this yet, so it may or may not work. We'll put it right there. Click OK. And then we've got it set up right. We've got our colored background, not transparent. We've got our shape that we want to create a mask with. And then we've got our image that we want to mask off. Now we hover between the two, hit Alt, Option on a Mac, and left click. And you see it's constrained it to that shape. Now again, with this one, we'd probably want to click on the baby and move it a little bit. And in this case, we might need to actually make it bigger. So we'll go Control T. We'll make it bigger. Not too much bigger. Let's bring it down so I can see what I'm doing. Maybe something like that. Click OK. And then let's change this to white because I think that'll be better. Remember, white is FFF, FFF. Ooh, what was that last color? Blue. Okay. All right. So that's not my favorite thing ever, but you could put some text in here. I mean, maybe this is like a baby shower invitation or whatever. I don't know why I chose a foot, but you get the point where you can take any shape. You can do brush strokes. You can do, you can do shapes that you just create. For example, let me throw this away. Let's try again. Let's start over, right? You can just go and create a shape over here. Just get your marquee or your uh, ellipse tool. Hit the shift key to draw a circle. Or you could not do shift and do an ellipse. Well, let's just put the ellipse right in the center. We'll, you'll see how this works. Then we're going to fill it. Let's just fill it with, doesn't matter, because we're going to change it later. And then we're going to hover here. So we've got our image over our shape, right? We're going to hover here, hit the alt key, connect them. And then you've outlined it. And now, of course, we'll take this layer and we'll use our V key and we move it to center it so it looks good. And that's a little bit better. Maybe we'd move it down right there. Or you could put it all the way in there. Whatever, whatever suits your fancy. But using that clipping mask tool just makes it really easy to create these frames for images in any shape that you want, any shape that you can imagine. And it's just really easy to tweak. You could even go on here and create an effect on the ellipse. Go to Layer and Layer Styles. Then you can go to Drop Shadow. It's going to bring up your Layer Styles dialog box. And then you go ahead and do a Drop Shadow. And you just 
tweak it. You just basically mess with it until you get it where you want it to be. So obviously you want it to go down. Yeah, I like it down to the right. And then you can just make it a little bigger if you need to, change the size, change the density, and then click OK. And then you've got a little drop shadow. Okay, so that's how you use clipping masks to frame in an image. The thing to remember is to hover between the two, hit the Alt or Option key, and then click it. And by the way, if you want to undo it, there you go. You just do the same thing, click it, and that undoes your clipping mask. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my full Photoshop course in the description below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.